everybody, it's Kathy Champion and you're back in my craft room at Random Acts of Crafting. Today I thought we would do a little fun full card that's a little different than most of the cards that we see, but I thought uh, this would make a lovely card for any time of the year. And I wanted to make it using this uh, beautiful lavender. And this is a Brutus Monroe cardstock and it is a 100 pound weight. So I cut this piece of 8.5 by 11 in half. I scored this at four and a quarter, so this was a eight and a half by five and a half, and I scored it at four and one fourth. So that's our card base. We're going to lay that to the side. Now we need to work on our second piece. Now we know that we know that this piece is already um, a five and a half, so we need to cut this down to five inches. So I'm going to turn it this way and bring it to my five inch line. And I'm going to slice it and now we need to turn this to the five and a half let's see yes and we need to put it in with with the um, five inch side up to the top of your scoreboard or your um, I'm going to use this as a scoreboard so that's the reason I say score so I'm putting it it's five inches across the top. So I need to bring this over because I want to score it at three quarters of an inch. So that's one quarter, two quarters or a half, and then three quarters or three fourths. So I'm just going to hold it right there. I'm going to move my blade up to the top and I'm going to use this little score blade on my trimmer to give me a score line right there. I'm not going to bend that yet because we've got a little bit more of a little fancy footwork to do on this um, on this card. I'm going to turn it this way and I want to measure um, two and three quarters. So I'm going to come to two and go over to three fourths and I'm not going to cut or score. I'm going to use my pencil and I'm just going to make a little tick mark right there and right here and then I'm going to turn it this way. Oh, I did it on the wrong side. Okay, this one we're going to leave because we do need that to be two and three quarters. So that's right. Actually, it's not. It's off. <laughs> I am messing up everywhere. It is night and it's probably past my bedtime, but I wanted to get this started and hopefully I'll finish it in the morning and have it up tomorrow for y'all. So that's three. So we're going to come back to two and one fourth and I'm going to put my tick mark right there. Then we're going to turn it to the side and we're going to do the same thing. We are going to measure, making sure your score line is to your right, we're going to measure it to two and three fourths and do a tick mark. Oops, that's a little bit bigger than I wanted my tick. So let's go back and go right there and then come down here and do the same thing. Okay, I think we have this right now. So we are going to do some fancy trimming here. The tick mark, and I don't know if you can see that, but right, uh, right there, that's one. Don't look at my nails, y'all. They need doing bad. And then we have one right here. And then over on the other side, we have one right there. So we're going to do the one that's right here. We're going to line it up into the track of our trimmer. Hold it with your finger and pivot the this side of the card down until this lines up in your track. So then what you're going to do is just close your arm down and slice that off. And then you're going to do the same thing with the other side. You're going to put that, that point right there and you're going to pivot that around until it's in the track. Close it and slice. Now that gives us a nice triangle and we're going to show you what we're going to do with that now. Put my trimmer up and I'm going to get my bone folder. And I'm going to save these little pieces because you never know when you can use something like this. So I might need to use those another time. I'm going to use my eraser and I'm going to get those little tick marks off. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and do two things. On my card base, I've already um, 
folded it so let's just make sure that we got it burnished down really well and then where we folded this I want to make sure that it is creased really well too so I'm giving it a nice little rub with my bone folder to make sure we got it a good little and I'm doing it on both sides because I just want to make sure that that's down nice and flat because what we're going to do is we are going to adhere this to our card well, just like this and then this is going to this is going to glue down on this side right here just like that then your card will close and this is going to come over now right now it looks very monotone because it's all the same color but that's going to change up really quick so how that's going to change up is we're going to cut a piece of this beautiful yellow uh, dots and stripes now i have this uh, pack in my store if you're interested in picking one up this paper is gorgeous and it's um it's echo park um and y'all know what good quality paper uh, echo park is make sure it's, yeah it is echo park wasn't sure if it was cartabella or echo park it is echo park um i love their paper it's really a nice quality I want to get this piece out without tearing my book. And I thought that was perforated. Okay, let's try tearing it. Here we go. And then we'll just cut that piece off at the top. Alright. So now that we got this out, we are going to cut um, a base to go on here, or a mat. So we know that we're going to need a piece that is um, four by five and one quarter or one fourth so let's get our trimmer out one more time and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to trim away that little excess piece right there and that needs to go about to there just enough to get that strip away and now we need to cut this down to four These little paper packs are so nice. They're eight by eight, um, and they're double-sided, so you have an option of using the stripes or the dots. All right, so we're going to cut this down to five and one fourth. And this is where I'm going to decide if I want the dots or the stripes. Y'all know I love my polka dots, so we're going to go with the polka dots. There we go. And then this piece right here, we're going to do a little bit of work on this piece. We're still not done with it. So let me pull out my square dies. And I actually use, I'm using this box right now for my, my dies that I use the most, which are my squares, rectangulars, ovals, and circles. So I have those right here on my desk where I can get to them. And let's see. These are a single stitch um, square die. So I am going to use the one that's next to the largest. And I think this one will fit. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a window out of this. We're going to cut a window, but we want to bring it, we want to get it as even on here as we can get it so that it will look cohesive on both sides, just like that. And I'm going to use my sticky tape, my purple tape, just to put that down so it doesn't move, even though I have magnetic. Um, I just don't want to take a chance of something going on. So I'm just going to get my dye machine over here. I'm going to do this off camera. Um, you all seen me die cut so many times. So I think, I think this will be good. So that's a plate. And I'm just going to lay this onto my dye machine. And make sure when you do this that you fold this piece out because you don't want to cut into this piece. You just want to cut this piece right here. So I'm going to lay that onto my, my mat. 
and I am going to crank this through. And we got that done. That was pretty painless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very gently lift this tape up. And you want to be careful, even though this is um, the purple tape. And I learned this, and I want to pass it on to you. I can't show you by bringing it up to my mouth because you can't see me. But if your tape looks like it's going to um, tear, just breathe on it. And look, it comes right a loose. There's something about the warm breath um, that causes it to release beautifully. So that's just another little tidbit that uh, I think works marv marvelously. <laughs> and there we go. So now we got that die cut out and we got this beautiful little piece that will fit in or we can use a different color. I thought about doing a white in there, but we'll see. But now look how cute this is going to be once we attach this to the back of our card. We're going to have this little overlay, just like this, that it's going to have a window where we can literally put this back in. We can stamp something on it, or we can cut another piece. And I'm thinking I really want to do a white piece. And I'll tell you why. I really want to do a white piece because I want to do a little bit of ink blending on it. I did kind of a sample of this today with just white. And I did I did it like this. And I ink blend, and I, and I, I stamp my little piggy. And this is a, a stamping up stamp set called... Um, this little piggy and this was my little piggy that I stamped look at this one I love that pig she just looks happy <laughs> and it says you make me happy so she's a happy little girl and I love it uh, I love the stamp set it's so so cute but um, I just thought I would bring this one over to show you how my sample turned out. And I didn't mat it or anything. I was just playing with it to see if I could get it to work. And it did. It worked really well. So what I'm going to do before I go any further is I'm going to put some glue down on this piece. So I'm going to reach for my art glitter glue. And I am going to adhere this. And I'm just going to run some glue up and down here. And what I want to do is I want to sit this in to that bin, but I don't want to go over that score line. So I'm just going to hold it up like this and sit it down, just like that. And then I'm going to press that down. Now I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to go back here and press that really good just so that we make sure that everything's adhered. Okay, so now we can come back to this side and we can go ahead and put this mat on. I think we're ready to go ahead and adhere this down. So, our glitter glue, and again, do I want to do the stripes? I'm so, in, I'm so indecisive when it comes to doing my colors. Do y'all do that? Mm. I'm doing pocket pot. I usually always go back to my first um, choice. Uh, I'm like that anytime that I see something that I like. And we were shopping for furniture. We did that. We went everywhere looking for furniture when we moved here. Uh, we needed formal living room furniture. And I knew what I wanted, and I knew that that was it when I saw it, and we went everywhere after that. Ended up right back to the first store we started at, and I ended up with that set, and I love it. It looks beautiful in my living room. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get this down, and now we have that beautiful little peekaboo right there. Isn't that cute? 
All right, so now I think I'm going to grab this die, and I'm going to grab a piece of white, and I am going to cut this out right here. And I'm going to go ahead and use this tape again, just so that it doesn't, not that it matters as much here, but just so that we can get it you know, where we need it. machine over. And lay this down here. And put this here. And now we're going to turn this through. This time I want to do a very pale lavender ink blend. Oops. I'm breathing on this, y'all. You might not believe me, but this world this technique does work if you just um, take the time to do that that breathing on it, it will come loose and it will not tear your cardstock. There's nothing any more aggravating than to be working on a project like this and rip your cardstock with your tape. So that's just a good little rule of thumb that you can do to um, keep that from happening. So what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my little blending brushes and I want to make sure I don't have any ink on them. They look pretty clean. And I am going to grab a, I'm going to move some of this stuff out of my way. Okay, I heard somebody screaming, put your pen back in your glue. So let's pop that off. It had a little air bubble that had come up to the top. And that's not a bad thing because it usually seals it, but I didn't want anything like that to happen. So let me look at my different colors. I have a wilted violet. That's pretty dark. Let's see, what else do I have that's in a shaded lilac? That should be a little lighter. And I have a seedless preserves. Now I think these are my three... I'm looking to see if there's any more... Um, of the, the colors that I have that might be in a lavender purple family. I am really thinking I'm thinking I might try it on this I'll tell you what, let's do a little test run on this little scrap of paper before we actually commit to this. It never hurts to do a little trial run. Oh, that's a little bit too dark. Mm. No, I don't think that's the color we want. So I'm going to take my microfiber and I'm going to really clean this brush off on it. Let's clean that ink up so we don't get ink all over everything. So that one's a little bit too dark, so you know what? I'm going to go in for the shaded lilac. I think this might be just a ticket because what I want is I want it to look, oops, I want it to look like it is um, kind of highlighting or, or spotlighting the uh, area. So let's put that down right there and come in. got a little bit of that seedless preserves on here but yeah I think that's the color that I want so now I know which color I want and sometimes you have to test the waters you don't always know if you don't kind of try it out first before you commit to it all right I'm gonna make 
put that over and I'm gonna put that in my trash so I don't end up getting it all over my card. That would not be a good thing. I'm sure y'all all have done that. I know I have. I have left ink on my surface and then I would end up getting um, ink on my card base or something that I didn't want it on. All right, so let's bring this back over and all I want to do is just hit it a little bit and I want to just come in around the edges like that. And you do not have to use um, the stress oxide inks to do this. You can use whatever ink you have. So I could have pulled my um, my uh, Versa, Versa Clair, Versafine Clair inks. I could have got I could have used those um, or any other brand that I have. Uh, those are my go-tos. It's my Distress Oxide and my the Versafine Clairs. I like both of those inks. I also have um, some of the Nouveau Hybrids and I could have grabbed one of those and done the same thing. So I'm just going around here just like this. And you know, you can make this as dark or as light as you like it just by putting down a little bit more color. But I don't want it colored all the way because what I want is I want it to look like that it's highlighted in the middle. Like there's a little light shining on the middle of it. And you do that just by leaving the center. A little color on it, but not as much as it is around the edges. So I'm just going to keep blending that in. That's exactly the way I would like it. And let's bring this up. Wipe this down. And I'm also going to clean my brush off really good. I need to get another set of these because I need to dedicate brushes to a certain color. And I picked these up off of Amazon. And uh, they're makeup brushes, but I love them because they're very, very fine. Look at that fine texture. It is just smooth as a baby's bottom. And I love those for doing my inking. Okay. So now we have this done. Well, let's figure out what we want to put on it. We could do the little piggy, but I'm thinking... And this right here is... This is the French countryside, and I am in love with this stamp set. I have not used this yet, but let's see if this water pump... That will go on here beautifully. I think that's going to be gorgeous, so we are going to try that. So let me get a stamp block, and y'all know I'm going to stamp this off on something else before I commit. So I'm um, trying to decide, well, I want to use my Distress, I mean, my Nouveau markers. I think I will, so I'm not going to use the um, Versafine ink. I'm going to go in with my Black Shadow, the Nouveau Hybrids. And I have these in my store if you're interested. You can go over and visit. I'll have the link in the in the um, below this video. Just um, click on the little drop down that says show more. And you'll see all my links. You'll also have the dimensions on what I, how I made this card. And all the written instructions if you want to copy and paste it so you can print it. I always think it's important to have written instructions as well as a video. So, oh, I was going to stamp off over here first. I almost messed up, didn't I? Ah, beautiful. So, let's go back in with my ink. Just want to make sure I get it inked up really good. And then I'm just going to put this right down in the center. I'm a little shaky tonight. 
Stamping and shaky don't usually work real well, does it? Oh, that's so cute. And it looks like the sun is shining on it because it's light. It's light behind it. I love that. Okay, I'm going to close my ink pad up. And let's make sure I don't have any ink on my fingers. I had to grab me a sip of my iced tea. Alright, now to put this down, to make sure we get... Oh, you know what? I stamped that wrong. Oh, goodness. Okay, I'm going to close up for tonight. I should have stamped this at an angle, and I wasn't thinking. So, I will re-ink another piece and re-stamp this, and we'll join back up. Be right back. Okay, we are back, and as you can see, I did fix my piece, and this is the way you need to stamp. However you put your stamp together, you need to stamp on, on the diamond. So just, you know, turn it to this angle, find um, a nice place to, to sit, and then stamp it. Uh, I did my ink blending again, and I also um, used that beautiful little... Um, uh, stamp set from the French countryside which was the water pump. So just as a reminder. Uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to use the in, the insert as your guide and what we're going to do is we're going to put this on here just like that. And you want to make sure that it fits in there just perfectly. So that looks like a good spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put some, I know this is going to fit well, so I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, glue on the back of this. And then I'm going to be very um, absorbent as I put this in, making sure that I get it exactly where it needs to be. And you're just going to slip that in like that. Once you get it in, you're just going to press it down. And then I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to go back on this just to get that good crease because this is the side that you have all of that, all the folds come together. This comes together here, this comes together here. So now what we need to do is we need to stamp something here and here. So, I am th either that or you could stamp here and here. You could put an embellishment here and here. So, let's think about what we want to do. Um, I'm thinking that this little pot of flowers right here would be so cute stamped right there. So, let's pull the flowers out. Aren't this adorable? So let me grab a stamp block. And make sure I get that nice and straight because I want to stamp it right about there. So for this, I'm going to also go back to my um, Black Shadow, the Nouveau Ink, and just in case I decide I want to add a little color. Now I'm going to, since I have not stamped this stamp, I am going to stamp it over here. And I think that looks good, so we are going to proceed stamp and I am going to bring this down because that will let me center this exactly where I want it and I want it right about here oh I love that that is so cute all right I'm gonna get my get my squeaky clean scrubber up here so I can just flip these off. 
Mm. You could actually have uh, sentiments, and I think I like this one. I think because the yellow, this is under my umbrella, and I love this Hello Sunshine. And I think that would make this card where we could use it for most anything. And this stamp set's not a clean stamp, it's actually a photopolymer. So let's get out um, some Hello Sunshine. I just think that's adorable. Now, you will notice too that in these photopolymer stamps, they're very high quality. Very, very high quality stamps. Um, like I've told y'all over and over, I cannot believe that I was so anti-stamping up for so many years. I just thought, no, it can't be that good. But I'm here to tell you, and any of you seasoned crafters probably already know this, uh, there are difference in stamps. There's difference in paper, depending on the quality. Um, so there are difference in the quality of something you get. You know, it's like going to the Dollar Tree and buying a dollar pan. Yeah, it may serve the purpose, but will it stick? More than likely, yeah. Um, will you get a long amount of wear out of it? Probably not. But if you go to Kohl's or somewhere and buy a pan that you pay a lot more for, it's heavier, it has a better coating on it, uh, it will last a lot longer, it will cook way better. So, you know, it's so true with your crafting products as well. And uh, so, you know, don't sell yourself short. Um, buy some products that are, have, have quality to them. You will be surprised how much better your projects look. I'm going to stamp that right there. Beautiful. I love that. Alright, now I think what I may do is um, put a couple of small butterflies on this side. Maybe um, up here and then maybe run some bling along here. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and open a card up because we haven't done anything to our inside. So let me scrub my stamp. And I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the um, on the card. I, I do like to put my stamps back as I use them. It's so easy when you're pulling them out using them from all different stamp sets to absolutely forget what goes where. And then it's a nightmare trying to figure it out and get them back where they belong. So... Now we're going to need a piece of white, but I think what I might want to do is put a piece of this yellow in here and then do a white piece over. So this is the white, the right width. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to five and a quarter. Do I want to do anything else? And I am not positively sure at this point. So, let's see. Nope, I don't like that. So, let's put this down and also cut a piece of white to go over top of this so we have a a nice place to stamp a sentiment. I think that will look very, very, very nice. So I'm going to grab a piece of white cardstock. And let's bring up our trimmer again. Now we know that that piece is 4 by Let's make sure it's four. It is four by five and a quarter. Yep. So we know this needs to be three and three fourths. So two and 
just before the four. And here we have a beautiful place to uh, drop a sentiment in. And you know, I, I, sometimes I like a card where I can um, put the sentiment in. Sometimes I like to write a, on a hand uh, note. So, you know, there really isn't a right or wrong way. But I'll tell you what, I am going to stamp this before I put this down. And I'm going to go back to... I'm going to go back to this that says, No matter the weather, we're friends forever. I think that is super cute. I might even stamp this umbrella in here. So let's, let's play with this. So I'm going to grab my Misty again. And the reason I'm going to do that, I think I'm going to try to build a scene. And your Misty is a great tool. And also, I said earlier in, the vid in one of my videos that um, this is the mini Misty. And I said my other one which is the original Misty. I said that it was the large, but I found out from a friend of mine that this is not the largest one they have. They also now have, this one is about six and a half by eight. Yeah, six and a half by eight. They also have one now that is 12 by 12. So they did come out for one that would be tailored, I think, more to the scrapbooker. Um, so if you're a scrapbook booker, you might want to um, think about getting that one. I'm not, I'm not into really scrapbooking. I do so many albums, but I don't do that sort of thing. So I just, you know, th these two are plenty big for me. So let's go ahead and I think I'm going to put that right there in the middle. And I'm going to grab the umbrella. And let's grab the umbrella handle. We may come back and put that in after the fact. You know what, I think I want to do some um, raindrops on this. But maybe I'll just use a blue pen and kind of drop them. I've got this stamp that comes with this set that has um, raindrops. Let me put this on and see the raindrops right there. But I'm not sure if I want to use that or if I want to... Hmm. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stamp this. I think I want to just pick this up like this. Now, if you're using the Misty and it uh, your paper comes up, reposition it after you um, open your door. That way you can be assured that it's back in the right place, exactly where you want it. All right, I'm going to use... I'm going to go ahead and use the Versafine. I want a really good impression on this. I really want a nice full stamp. And when this doesn't go all the way up to your umbrella, uh, I could have waited and stamped that so that I could meet it up to there. Or you can just take a Sharpie and let me grab my bifocals because when I am doing something that I want to make sure is right and perfect, I usually throw those on. I guess reading glasses would sound much better. What do you think? 
And see, that's no wiser for the wear. Nobody will ever know that that didn't stamp exactly where I wanted it to, except us. And we'll keep that between ourselves. <laughs> so anyway, I think this is beautiful. I think it's actually beautiful just like it is. But you know what would make this even prettier? If we stamp this umbrella on a piece of paper like this and cut those pieces out. So what I'm going to do now, let me get a chamois and clean off my stamp. lay these over here on my my little pea and the little plastic cover and I am going to bring this back and lay him down right here maybe like that got a little bit of impression on that just from sitting it down do you see that going to ink this up because we're going to fussy cut this umbrella. And I'm going to actually do this in two colors. Okay, we got that one done. And here's a little square. Well, I didn't mean for that to happen, but it's okay. At least my paper was positioned where I want it. I love using technique on cards. I just absolutely love it. I think it adds so much to your creativity. So, you know, don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to try something different. Um, this is how we learn. This is how we learn to do things that are different. And once you go through the challenge of challenging yourself to do something a little bit different, you'll be surprised how well it turns out and how much more proud you're going to be of your work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my, uh, my little cutter bee scissors. And since I'm fussy cutting, I'm going to throw on my bifocals again. And I am going to cut these out. And I am going to cut to the inside of that line. And I only want these two outer pieces of this color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and cut straight across. And then this will lead me where I can get uh, this little angle or this little curvature just like I want it. And I want to cut the black away. Just like that. And then I'm going to cut away on this side. And this piece is going to go on my cord right there. And now we're going to cut this piece. And again, we're just going to go on. See what I'm doing? I'm cutting on the um, to the right of the line. This piece will be ready to piece in right there. And now we've got to cut this middle piece out for our middle piece. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to cut across here. 
and I'm going to cut to the inside just like that and then to the inside of this piece and to the inside of this piece and you might think well you're losing your lines um, I am but when you put when you place this down onto here you're actually using the lines from the piece itself so you're really not losing your lines and let's go ahead and glue these down I think I'm just going to go ahead and put my glue in here like so and then I'm going to lay this into my glue and get that just where I want it okay and now we're going to do the middle one do the same thing. I'm just going to dot some glue in here. And and then the last piece will go in like this. And we're going to do the same thing. Before I go in to finish this, I am going to grab my Sharpie. And right here where I got a little white showing, I'm just going to fill that in with my marker. And I've got the same thing over here. You see what I did? Just like that. All right. So now let's go ahead and get this piece. Now I think that adds so much to that card. Look at this. Is that not cute? And what it allows you to do is you can decorate your um, umbrella by doing that with whatever color scheme that you're using for your card, which makes your card just absolutely stunning. So now we're ready to go ahead and put this um, and let's go ahead and adhere this to the, to the um, mat. So, I'm going to go ahead and use some art glitter glue, and I just put my pen back in it. <laughs> Normally, I'd be able to let the pen out, and I'd have a clump. Okay. And let's put that right about... out there and now all we have to do is adhere this into our card so again our quarter glue to the rescue for anybody that lives in the southern half of our country if um, you are looking for the art glitter glue I'll put a link uh, to Maymay's store. You can actually go there, but if you will click on the link that I put and buy through that link, um, I get a little kickback as an affiliate. So, uh, anytime you see any of Maymay's products listed and you click on her store through my link, I do get a tiny bit of a kickback for recommending her shop. So, just something I thought I would throw out there. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is figure out how to close this card. And I am thinking that I want to put something on the back and maybe close this with a piece of ribbon. Or 
we could very easily leave it like it is and this card would be a beautiful card no matter how you give it. Um, I thought about doing a, a sticky dot right here but it does I don't think it looks good. I tried it on the other card that I made and it just was not my thing. Let's just try seeing if we can knock that little hump down a little bit. That's not bad at all. I think this is a very attractive card. And a girl by the name of Lisa Curio, she's also a Stamping Up demonstrator. I saw this card on her channel and I thought, I have got to share this with all of you. I thought it was so cute and I just absolutely loved it. So I want to give a shout out to Lisa for this inspiration. So if you want to try this card, it's really not hard, even though it looks like it has a lot of elements to it. It's not a hard card to make. I was really surprised at how easy uh, this came together. But um, if you make this, make sure you go over and share it on my Facebook group, Random Acts of Crafting by Kathy Champion. If you are not a member of that group, uh, click on when you go in, just click join. You'll have to answer two or three questions, and you, once you do that, you'll be approved. You can share all your projects that you are inspired to make um, on that site, so I can see what you're up to. And I think that's a great um, way for us all to share what we do with each other. So, I'm going to close for now, because I know this video got a little bit longer than I would have liked, but God bless each and every one of you. I love you so much, and it, I pray for you every day, and I know we all have needs. We're all living in a, a time of a little chaotic fear. Um, God's not the author of fear, so let's, re let's keep that to the forefront of our mind and dwell on Him. Because with him, you'll find peace. And I think that's what we all need um, during this very um, uncertain time. Between the stock market dropping and people are losing. I know we've lost a lot. Um, if it keeps dropping, we will have no savings to fall back on. And our, my husband is um, looking at retirement probably in the next couple years. So... I am so praying that we will see a rebound and it will be soon. That's been my prayer. I've also prayed for my husband to ease the tension that he's feeling. You know, it's sad when you work for 30 years and you uh, invest into your 401k and then you just watch it disappear. It's very, especially when you're this close to retirement. You know, if it was back even five years ago, uh, you wouldn't have the same dread. But, um... Y'all pray for our country, pray for our financial system, pray for our leaders, and most of all, pray for the scientists and the doctors that are working to try to find a way to stop the spread of this awful disease called the coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, again, in closing, I want to just say, always, always let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father above. He is so worthy of our praise. He's so worthy of our love. And it is our commission to share His love with others. So I just want to say, Jesus loves you and so do I. And until we craft again, happy crafting. Bye-bye.